at the very top of the hill will represent the headwaters of the river high in the mountains, along with its flow from Sierra Meadows, which are the largest alpine meadows in the continental United States uh, at, at 5,000 feet in height. Uh, this region is known for its tremendous biodiversity, with many species of birds stopping there uh, on their migratory journey. There will be murals uh, representing all four tributaries as they cascade down stunning waterfalls and rapids uh, prior to entering Lake Oroville. The lower portion of the mural as we get closer to the river and the hatchery will represent the lake and the river as it works its way through Oroville and into the valley. The river is the thread that ties uh, all 60 murals together. And as one walks from one end of the, to the other, they will gain an appreciation for the nature and beauty of each dynamic region. Within these 600 feet, we will beautifully illustrate in lasting and colorful mosaic the entire 200 mile odyssey of the magnificent Feather River. In addition to featuring a spectacular journey of the rivers, uh, the mural will accurately display a dazzling variety of flora and fauna that are all dependent on its rich waters. From the 20 plus fish species that call the river home to exotic critters such as the Sierra Nevada yellow-legged frog and the long-toed salamander. Also included in this wide variety of wildlife and river uh, is uh, our otters, ash-throated uh, flycatchers, warblers, phoebes, and numerous waterfowl species. The objective the main objective is to involve as many students as possible, along with a broad base of support, to create a wholly unique and extraordinary community art project. This will not be a patchwork of individual pieces, but rather an organized and structured project that tells a story with beautiful characters and vivid continuity from start to finish. As with all rainforest art projects, the most valuable outcome is the sense of pride and ownership that the, young, that the youngsters experience as they become stakeholders in the community. We will publish an introductory coloring book that will be featuring uh, sheets for the kids to better understand the river and its riparian flora and fauna. Special presentation packages will be handed, hand delivered to local school principals explaining the project and how they can be involved. The Rainforest Art Project artisans will hold workshops with students and teachers to explain the theme and incorporate student drawings into the final designs to assure that there is continuity as the river works its way from one mural to the next. Once the final designs are ready for fabrication, Rainforest artisans and volunteers will return to the classroom to work with students on the mosaics. Engraved plaques will be placed within uh, each mural to explain uh, which part of the river it represents and to credit the creators and sponsors. Final assembly of the individual uh, plant and animal mosaics uh, into the larger murals uh, will take place at the Rainforest Project Center in Chico or appropriate workspace uh, in Oroville. The logistics, uh, the 60 mural project will be divided into three phases, each requiring one year with 20 murals per year. These will be ongoing, re uh, uh, will be, uh, there will be ongoing research as we proceed with the project, which will involve field work and photographs along with an outreach and, um, and knowledgeable organizations such as Department of Fish and Wildlife, the Department of Water Resources, the Feather River Land Trust, Sierra Club, and Audubon Society. Because of the scale of the project, we'll be uh, reaching out to various community organizations for their participation. These will include Brushstrokes, Oroville Senior Center, women's clubs, rotary clubs, et cetera. We will be training volunteers to act as mentors in the classrooms. Uh, sponsors. Um, we have already had requests for sponsorship working with the city of Oroville. We will develop a program where businesses and organizations may make a contribution to the program by sponsoring the mural. Uh, educational materials, we'll have the introductory package that goes to the principals uh, to uh, engage them in the project. We will have uh, large coloring books uh, that will show the whole scale of the project where the kids uh, can color and learn about the project as they do it. Uh, reference supplements, uh, these are photos and uh, details into the specific parts of the river that the kids will be working on. And there will also be uh, instructional videos for the technical part of it. Um, we've uh, flown the uh, whole area with a, uh, a drone and so we've got our beginning program there. And uh, we've uh, designed a few just to get started, uh, to get some ideas of uh, 
what these murals can look like. They're, they're very horizontal. And uh, the quality that we want to do here is, uh, is really world class. And this is uh, some of the samples that we've come up with. Why don't you grab that other one? So the one thing that we don't want to do is have a juvenile patchwork uh, like we see in a lot of schools. Uh, we've got to inspire these kids to really reach high. We're going to set the bar high. And we are going to create a standard that, <clears throat> that they will aspire to, and we will work with them to achieve that standard. It's a lot, lot more work, but uh, it's going to make it so exciting and interesting as you walk down the boulevard. Uh, uh, you'll be able to stop at each one and read about it, see the animals from the salmon in life size uh, to, like, uh, we show the dragonfly in a larger size, even the nymphs that are, and the small creatures that are the, right at the base of the ecosystems. We want to show them as, as we blow them up how interesting they are and explain their vital role in this whole ecology of the river. Also, if we did an overlay of the tributaries of the river, we would uh, see that uh, it just goes right up into Plumas County. Those are the same people in those communities that drive down here to go to Walmart and go to the Home Depot and so on. And so we want to use the Feather River to bond these communities to make them feel closer rather than just doing their shopping and returning home. We want them to come by and go to a restaurant. We want to be able to show these works of art uh, in restaurants or, or, or galleries <coughs> so that they can look at them and really have a sense of appreciation for them. Uh, and maybe do private unveilings and have us go up to uh, Quincy and, and uh, do the same thing with them in their restaurants and so on. So I think it could be a very, very positive thing for the economy of the community as we, as we get rolling. As far as the scale goes of this, I know of no other project in, that's this scale. 600 feet is a monster. I, I think it belongs in the Guinness uh, Book of World Records. And uh, as professional artists, uh, our challenge is going to be to make it truly, truly world class. Nothing will beat this. So uh, we're here to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Councilmember Goodson has a question. Yes. Um, thank you so much. Under logistics, you had mentioned um, be reaching out to various community organizations. So I was just wondering, what does that list look like thus far? What does your outreach look like? And if you have not already, have you reached out to a nonprofit organizations such as the Hmong Cultural Center? Have you reached out to the African American Family and Culture Center for their input as well? Perfect, thank you. Yes, we will. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're, we're at the very beginning of this, and I wanted to, uh, uh, I, I've reached out to the Feather River Land Trust because it's so important for us to understand the ecology of these regions. So mm -hmm. the amount of research that we have to do even to just get started is, is tremendous to be able to map this whole journey of the river. And many of these areas along the river uh, haven't even been explored until, you know, the 60s. So uh, it's, there's a, a lot of really incredible things that go on along this amazing river. And we will be reaching out. We've done the Feather River Land Trust. We've done the Audubon Society and the Department of Fish and Wildlife. And that list is going to ex expand. And uh, those people that you mentioned will be on that list. And I just have another question. Yes, ma'am. 20 murals per year, is, yes, is that the goal? And yes. is that a realistic and doable goal? Yes. Is it? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I think so, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a challenge, it's big. And Thank you. We have spoken to a few schools so far, mm -hmm. so the high school knows about it, and the intermediate schools know about it, so they, they have an idea this is coming. So. All right. And the broader yes, the base of inclusion, the better. We want this to be a, uh, to really expand the, your whole pedestrian uh, uh, traffic up, uh, to go up Table Mountain Boulevard for people to want to read about it. There will be a plaque about probably five by seven in the corner of each one with a QR code where they can learn a lot more about it. And, uh, but they, they'll also be able to read who the sponsor is, uh, who the kids are that worked on it and uh, a, a brief description of the animals that are being depicted there. So you'll be able to walk it and just stop at each one. It, it'll be a lot to take in one, but it'll probably bring people back. Just FYI, you do have the principal of um, Las Plumas High School is right behind you, Dr. Lamar Collins. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Lamar. <laughs> Good to see you. Okay, so Danny Ramos is gone now, huh? 
Okay. Council Member Pittman. Okay, thank you very much. Well, we have, my question is we're in a great project. I think you guys got tremendous energy. Just for clarification, so when you do a mural, is it going to be there permanently, or are you exchanging them out and changing them over the years? Oh, these are forever. Okay, gotcha. They so go they, in there. This, this is the stuff that they put in Pompeii, you know, okay. 2,000 right. years ago. And <laughs> it, it, when they lifted the ashes, it's still there. It's the same technology. Okay. Uh, these are very, very durable. They'll become part of your landscape forever. Good. I just, I, when you were talking about so many murals, I thought you might be replacing them year to year. No. So, okay. And, oh, it's, it's a big story. I mean, yeah. it, it'll definitely tell the whole story. Right. And it's our job to make sure that it's really accurate and bringing in the proper partnerships. And uh, I want to say also that we won't be doing trestles or, or dams or, or bridges. It's just purely the nature of it sure. from the meadows, from the, yeah. uh, you know, the alpine uh, beginnings, from the Cascades and Sierras, through these magnificent meadows winding down down and coming through the canyons. I mean, it's a huge subject matter, and I think it's going to really bring a tremendous sense of appreciation for what the uh, what this resource really is. It's it's magnificent. Have you been through the Wild and Scenic Rivers part of the Middle Fork? Uh, no. Uh, you, I watched you, the video. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's uh, there's a lot of history and great stories to be told there that yeah. will probably fit into your thing, and it's it's a unique piece. Of, uh, you know, not many of us have been through that, but. If you ever get to river rafting and you really want to go crazy, that's the place to go, I guess. That's a little scary. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, thank uh, you. Uh, let me say this, and, and uh, thank you for that. Uh, anybody that has a story that will contribute to this body of, of uh, research that we're going to be doing, or some animal in particular that's of interest to you, we really want to hear about it. And this is, I think this really uh, remarks, we start, already met with the Arts Council, but this really starts our outreach to you, the community, to uh, help us and, and come cool. up with ideas on who would be interested in being partners. Thank you. Thank you very much. Vice Mayor Thompson. Thank you. Really looking forward to the project and waiting for this for quite a while. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the sad part that I'm sure you guys are hoping to have is potential vandalism of the mural. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, it's just sad when you see a brand new restaurant or a school or a brand new bathroom or whatever that is that you go in there with the and somebody's took in a knife or whatever. Sure. Yeah. But if we have a sort of a new kind of stone deal and people have thrown rocks and stuff, these are not rocks and steel, those are wooden tablets and stuff and that's what they're trying to do with it. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you, Scott, for that, because th that, that really goes to the heart of what we're doing. Uh, when we snow ski, <clears throat> one of the first things we learned is to uh, Lean forward, you lean back, you fall on your ass, you know, and, and it just, you, the only way to control it is leaning forward. And if we have, uh, if we have kids in our community that aren't happy and we're, we disenfranchise them, we can't buy enough razor wire or build a high enough fences to protect these assets. Uh, what this is, is a huge effort to lean forward for future let generations, to have a broad base of ownership, because we expect over a thousand kids just in Oroville, I would hope that we can get up to 2,000 uh, involved in this program. And that level of ownership has proved incredibly valuable. Now, we have a history also that I'll tell you about in, uh, for instance, Barrio Logan in San Diego, one of the roughest neighborhoods in town. Uh, we have a big presence there. That's where our main office is. Uh, we've done numbers of public mosaics there, never had one incident. And we've worked in towns that uh, are similar in size, like Brawley, uh, which has a much tougher reputation, Calexico, uh, all these places. So we have literally thousands of, of mosaics out there. And this whole concept of ownership, that's why I, I gave up a, a very successful business called Feather River Wooden Glass Company, Feather River Door Company, in order to do this. I love the Feather River, named my first company, started in 1971 in order to do this. And the whole idea behind it is give them ownership and we can literally change these communities. I worked uh, years ago with youth groups in San Diego and Southeast San Diego in the tough neighborhoods. And uh, the one thing I saw was the government could spend all kinds of money building beautiful things and they would just get trashed. And so my whole idea in, in uh, quitting my selling my business to be able to start working with kids on this is that there's only one way to change it and that is through ownership. 
And that's what we're doing here. We're giving a huge sense of pride and ownership. And you will see all the time kids walking along there saying, I did that. So you look for that. I did that. And they'll be bringing friends there. And they say, yeah, that's mine. I helped make that. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's all vitrified. I mean, spray paint really won't hurt it. It'll hurt the the concrete on the wall because it's going to penetrate that. But when you work with vitreous surfaces, you surfaces you can use thinners and and uh, just wipe it off. So we're not we're not really worried about that. And like I said, we have thousands, literally thousands of of examples out there in cities all over, tough tough towns, even in Mexico. Oh, done. Cool. Councilmember Smith. Thank you, Mayor. So this past weekend, um, Feather River Parks District hosted a river cleanup in preparation for the fall concerts in the park, additionally for our Salmon Festival. And what was good to see was the fact that they had their staff out there pulling shopping carts out of the trails and the river, and also DWR participated. They had several boats out there cleaning the river but was what was most encouraging, Victoria, by the way, of the Parks District was leading the charge on this. She's just been a great advocate for Oroville. I just want to give kudos to her and the hire of her by the Feather River Parks District. But she had engaged with the students of our two high schools, LP and Oroville. And that was so encouraging, going right to the point of ownership. And I think that's just so critical. We know our future is a youth, you know, it's kind of a worn out cliche, but it's just so true. Uh, and there uh, at that park was a bunch of young people from our two high schools, the environmental club, out there with bags and picking up trash and doing that. And that's just so encouraging. And it goes right to, you know, again, your point about that ownership piece. And our school districts, you know, reach far beyond the borders of the city of Oroville. It goes up to right. Forbes Town, I believe. It's, it's quite <laughs> large. Um, up to the uh, Feather River area, um, the Feather Falls area, right. into the Burn areas and whatnot. So the reach of our two school, our two school districts, West the High School, and then of course uh, Oroville Elementary School District, is it's a huge footprint. And so engaging our young people and developing that ownership. Uh, piece is just so critical um, to this whole thing. But I just want to say this is great timing because in the last few years that I've been engaging on a level that I've been, I've not seen the young people as seeming, they're more interested now. There's a, for whatever reason, whether it's Victoria's activities, a, a wonderful new principal at LP that we might be hearing from here shortly, uh, or a combination thereof. I just want to say that uh, I'm just really encouraged and thank you uh, for all the work that you're doing. And I think this is a good timing for Oroville. Yeah, wonderful, and thank you. Because uh, this is uh, such a, uh, this is the largest example in one shot. I mean, we've worked with communities for years to do this kind of, this much work. But this is such a forward-thinking project. <clears throat> and like I say, the, th the over a 1,000 kids I know will be involved in, in taking ownership in it. And uh, I moved here in, <clears throat> from San Diego in 1971. And Orville really didn't have that, that good of a reputation. And that's been going on for a long time for a number of reasons. But this, uh, within the last 10 years, there has been something, and I think you all see it too, there's something transformative going on. I think it's enlightened leadership and uh, just a, a sense of pride and the possibilities. We're just exploring the possibilities, and we are terribly honored to be part of, those, uh, of this transformation. Well, thank you very much. Very, very impressive. Uh, appreciate your, your talents. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. Mayor, if I could, I just want to take a moment and thank Dan and Leanne. I just want to inform the council all of this has been done, and we have not paid anything for this. Uh, Dan and Leanne <laughs> have volunteered all of their time, all of their vision to help us uh, realize our vision. I think it's going to be a, um, a unique experience when we get that walkway done and we get these murals in there and we, you know, we put in the appropriate lighting, we put in the appropriate cameras to help protect our assets, we armor our assets so that in the event that some um, individual wants to damage what um, 
has taken so long to accomplish, you know, we'll be able to hopefully save with that. But one aspect that uh, Dan is not involved in but is part of this project is the archway that I don't know if I've shared this with the council or not or the community. This is an archway. Uh, Dan prepared this for us. I might have to accept it. I'm not in my mm -hmm. stick man standing there uh, pointing at something. So this is a, a representative of an archway that would be at the top of the hill as you ascend down something on the sign that would say something to the effect of welcome to our viewers of downtown, our, our historic downtown. Can I get something a, like that, you know, would be the idea behind it. Get a picture of that. What the that. archway would say. Because I know I'm going to get hatched. Things like that. So this is, would be uh, part of that vision. We're trying to, uh, for lack of a, we want to create an experience. When you drive down the hill, you come into the area, you see the sign that says welcome, and then you see the murals on the side and you go across the bridge and if you think about it this will correlate directly with the lighting of the green bridge that the rotary club is doing i mean so you're going to get a really unique uh experience right there you don't get anywhere else in butte county you don't get anywhere in the north state i don't think i mean so this will be incredibly beautiful for us and i got to thank dan and leanne for the the ability to uh, have that vision and to see that because i'm not the most artistic person in the world but anyway, I'll leave this up here if anyone would like to take a look at it. It'll be right here. Help yourself. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Appreciate it. Council and by members. The way, uh, Council we run an open shop. Anybody's welcome anytime uh, to our location. Don't, don't go Chicago. away yet, Dan. Oh, Councilmember Smith wanted to comment. I, I just wanted to include a couple other school districts. You know, when you start naming names and then you realize you forgot. <laughs> so it's both Thermalito and Palermo, and then the tribe also has a school as well. Of course. And, and they're also very engaged. We have the Orville Botanical Gardens, they had a, over a $100,000 grant. For planting trees and those districts were very much engaged in that process i guess i'm just saying that i think this is just a wonderful time uh, to strike when a while iron's hot as they say and so i think Thanks. that the, you're going to just be wildly re uh, received with open arms by our various school districts thank you thank you very yeah. much thank, thank you, you All right, moving on to item number two, CAL FIRE update on transition. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of the Council. It's an honor to be here as your Fire Chief today uh, and present you an update on your uh, Fire Department. My name is uh, Garrett Scholl. Uh, the handout you may uh, reference as I move through uh, the bullet points here. Uh, your fire department has responded to a little over 1,300 calls for service here in the city of Orville since uh, July 1st until September 18th. A number of those calls have been on fires, as, you, as mentioned there in the handout, uh, a little over 1,100 medical aids, 11 hazmats, and 69 uh, public service response. Uh, so very busy and active uh, in the city of Orville. Very proud of our CAL FIRE prior prevention officers and their engagement with our uh, with your local uh, police department in investigation of arsons. I won't comment on any specific cases, but we are actively engaged with them. Uh, arsonists do not know boundaries, and I believe in cooperation and working with local law enforcement to uh, address those issues, and that is the same here for the city of Orville. We are moving towards and have moved towards a standardizing our radio communication process and dispatching resources to receiving calls and improving our interoperability here in the county. And the resources of uh, the city of Orville are dispatched like they are in the rest of the county in a dynamic dispatching, meaning if your engine's the closest or if another engine from the county or state fire department is here in your city, that engine could be dispatched to your call. So we're all integrated in that aspect now to make sure we serve the public the best we can in, in the fire service here in your city. We've also integrated or beginning the process and continue integrating the city's commercial and high risk facility pre plans into our countywide database, which provides immediate facility information to all resources responding to calls within the city. And what that is, is such as, you know, your hospital or Rayleigh's. If there's an incident there, uh, each resource now through the computers on that uh, piece of apparatus has the information, the diagrams, uh, the access points, all that sort of information to help firefighters get to there and get to the issue at hand. Uh, and help any victims that need out. So instead of having uh, those in a old school, if you will, binder process now, it's digitized, they can respond, and those uh, pre-plans now are on all apparatus uh, in the county of Butte. 
We also, uh, as you may have heard today, we had an incident out on Riverbend Park for water rescue. We have worked with the uh, firefighters there and reestablishing the city's water rescue response utilizing the city's watercraft, and they responded today. They're part of our county-wide OES Type 2 water rescue team, uh, which has been deployed by OES throughout the North State and will function as part of that uh, to serve the city of Orville. We've integrated the truck or aerial ladder training programs from the city of Orville and Gridley to match. The, there's a truck company like the one here in the city of Orville in Gridley. Those programs and training programs now mirror each other so the personnel can staff both uh, here in Orville or in Gridley to make sure we have that continual staffing of the ladder truck uh, for your city. We've also uh, adopted a policy that neither one of those trucks will be out of service at the same time. If we have a mechanical issue with the truck in the city of Orville, the city of Gridley truck will be available to respond and vice versa until those apparatus are brought back up. So neither one of them will be down at the same time. Uh, our hazmat team, the city of Orville continues to contribute to that. We have three personnel that are hazmat specialists and technicians on our interagency team in the county. We were sending a fourth member of the city fire department through that training this fall and spring. We have a number of employees that have participated in out of county responses to some of the large fires throughout the North State in both command and logistical positions. That's paid for and funded by the state as those people leave and we backfill with those resources to maintain the personnel staffing that's expected here in the city of Orville. What that brings back is individuals that are able to uh, address emergency situations and issues here locally and have that experience um, gaining it. You know, we don't always have major incidents usually in Butte County, but go out and get that experience and bring it back to uh, the local uh, fire department. And then we continue to uh, provide community school participation, the re recent Ample Health Fair, and the upcoming Salmon Festival will have heavy involvement in uh, with your fire department and as well as a Cal Fire education and things for citizens that we know come from outside the city into your city to visit to make sure they understand defensible space and those sort of things. So <coughs> I open it for questions if there is from anyone in the council. Do we have any questions from the last? Councilmember Pippen? Yeah, thank you. Uh, hmm? Good report. Um, quick question on the um, fire safety house and the training with that. I know Kiwanis donated that to the city and we made a commitment to provide that training to the youth in the schools. Um, but I know it's aged mm -hmm. and um, I'm going to just say that there may be necessary things to attend to. I'd really like to see a list of things that you folks might suggest as improvements or replacements or whatever necessary. And then what kind of a plan do we have to take that to the schools and provide that training to the youth? I don't know if you've even thought about that. I, I appreciate it going to the uh, festival this uh, upcoming weekend. Um, that's just, you know, it's a, one of the things that we have, and the city made a commitment to the Kiwanis. That I believe it was around $35,000, $40,000 they brought that trailer for us. So uh, it's a struggle to get out there and do it, but uh, I'm guessing given the age, it probably needs some things. So. I'd appreciate knowing that. Yeah, we could we could talk into that and get back to you on that. Thank you. The other question I had is, how did your with the 911 went down? How did your system work? Or yeah, did you have to reload to, to telephone calls or whatever? Yeah, great question. So we're secondary PSAP, um, and so the primary PSAPs went to a cell phone just like we do. We have we have that built into our coop plan uh, for that uh, mm -hmm. scenario. Um, and then text 911 still utilized it. So um, moving forward, it's a great education tool. If people, most people have cell phones, text to 911 works. It gets into our command center. Um, and so we took calls in our fire stations, people physically visiting our fire stations, and then we still received calls uh, via text phone okay. uh, from one center to the other. So we were able to dispatch in that sense. I think the public was confused because they said it didn't work, but then they said, yeah. well, how can we text if it isn't working? I, I know that the different the difficulty is hardware phones easy, cell phone is uh, complicated because of location and how it works. So right, it's good to hear. Thank you, Councilmember Smith. Yeah, I just want to thank you for your willingness to participate in a local community event and that uh, you're uh, available to do that. So your firehouse is going to be at the corner of Huntoon and Montgomery in parking lot A. <laughs> um, in case anybody's wondering, that's where we have it. Uh, to be set up, but I think, it, again, it's a great service to the public, and at the end of the day, really, that's what this is all about, and it's serving the public, and that, again, you're engaging our community on that level. Really appreciate that. Uh, just as a matter of, of business, um, so since July 1st, 
to now, uh, it would be, uh, I think, good for us to uh, see that uh, response times and, and how, given, as you reported, that the closest in, so if you have an apparatus at Food Max and an incident happens across the street, they're no longer coming from blocks away, they can just be dispatched right from that point. So it'd be kind of interesting to see what our response times look like now with that new command and control structure uh, deployed uh, versus the way that we did business, you know, not besmirching the past, it is what it is, but this is a, I think, a more efficient system. And it would just be, I think, good for the public to understand that, uh, that that's been, an, I would, and it's an assumption, but I would assume that it, we've probably seen an enhancement to that uh, response time. With the, with the integration, yeah. With I, the I, integration. I would suspect so. I would have to pull the data, and we'll, myself and Chief Tins will take a look at that and see what we can bring back. But thank you. Yeah. Councilmember Goodson. So I've just been ruminating, and I know that um, with the system being down the other day, 211 still worked. And I was wondering, is there any interconnectivity with, with both 911 and 211? And in the future, um, would, would that be a good branch um, and an outlet for, for res a resource informational channel, channel that can work in conjunction um, with that sure, 911? So so for processing 911 calls, so that 211 is no, an information sharing? No, no, not processing, but a lot, a lot of the calls are not, they're non-emergency. Mm -hmm. And just to have that non-emergency link to resources. So uh, absolutely. So we're engaged with 211. Uh, we have the ability to okay. share messaging and stand up uh, certain levels based on the activity going on if we have a major wildland fire and everything. We... Uh, now have our fire information line the 538 number that is tied into 211 so folks can call in and we can update you know our 911 systems down please call this number blah 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 um and so we are engaged with 211 and, it, and if people call into 211 and ask about your fire department they will be diverted over to our messaging that we have great thank you i think councilperson goodson that this is a was a real um, eye opener and awakener for Cal OES and for our providers that do this. This was an act of vandalism to a fiber optic line that took you know everyone down. So this is something that I'm sure that uh, they will address through a redundant system within that system. So that in the event that that does happen again, I mean they tried several bridges, is my understanding, to get it back up and it failed. So um, thank goodness it was as short lived as it was. They were able to locate it, repair it. Um, but I think it's also going to be one of those things that, you know, it's going to make them rethink what they're doing and come sure. up with another plan because, you know, really, quite honestly, the unthinkable happened. <coughs> Chief, I'd like to say thank you for this uh, update and the transition. I There was a question that came up a couple of meetings ago. Someone was um, wondering about gas mileage and a rumor going around about the Oroville engines going out of city limits. And so I called and asked you a simple question, and you answered it forthwith. Uh, the Orville fire engine, because of how you explained the closest station, closest engine response, had went out of the city limits 37 times, sometimes as far as Kelly Ridge. But Cal Fire had responded into the city 300 times in the first 60 days. So... We really appreciate that, and a lot of times a simple phone call will answer questions and speculation. Thank you for coming, sir. Absolutely. Thank you. Chief Shulin, if I could just get you just for one moment and quickly to um, update the council on a, the potential of a volunteer fire program. I know you and I discussed that the other day and that there are interested people within our community and what the potential of that could be, if you could just real quickly. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I spoke with Chief Tins on that. We begin looking at the, we have a model in the county that we use and the resources that are available and to bring that, of course, in front of you to look at. But if the city is, is interested in uh, sponsoring a volunteer side of that aspect, of course, the city would be responsible for the insurance and the PPE and the pagers and those sort of things. But they would be able to fall in line with what the county fire department is doing. We provide the training um, and the necessary things that, that are needed through laws and things to bring folks in and make a volunteer fire department for the city of Orville. We would um, will be bringing that forth to you folks and, and seeing if there's interest for that. I will say that um, we just are in the process of completing the end of this month our countywide uh, volunteer fire department for the Butte County Fire Department recruiting efforts, and there was 11 uh, folks that were within the city of Orville. 
uh, that did apply. Okay. Uh, so of course they, they don't meet the parameters of being into the county so we need to look at another viable option. They, there is um, uh, vetting processes including some uh, background checks and things in order to get onto the volunteer department but it's something that we'll bring back to the council. Thank you. Perfect. Good. Thank you Chief. Thank you Mayor. Thank you Council. Okay, moving on to public communications. This is the time for the public to communicate with us on non-agenda items. Madam Clerk, do we have any speakers? Mr. Mayor, we have five speakers. Our first speaker is Tony Rosales. How is everyone doing today? Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Well, awesome. Uh, I'm going to keep it short and simple. Um, I'm going to introduce myself and I'm going to talk to you about my business uh, that I just started. Um, so I started Rosales Event Decor Rentals uh, along with my brother, Mateo. Uh, we've been in business since the uh, beginning of September. And uh, right now we don't have a physical location, but you can always uh, look it up on Google, Facebook, Instagram. If you guys allow me, I'm going to leave some business cards right there at the entrance. Um, now some something a little about myself. So I've been here 15 years in Orville. Um, I went to Golden Hills Elementary School after that Palermo and graduated from uh, Los Blumas High School. After that, I actually attended uh, Butte College for four years. I, w I was working full time, so it was a little harder to get that out of the way. I got my associate's degree in business administration. Um, and now I'm actually pursuing a bachelor's at Chico State. Um, I've been working for a long time now, since I was actually very young, from um, you know, raking walnuts to actually picking peaches and thinning trees. Um, right? And then after that, I was actually a manager for Panda Express. Um, I did resign from there back in 2021 and continue my career with uh, Pro Pacific Fresh as, a, as an account manager. And now I'm right here presenting to you guys. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you for your time. I hope uh, you guys can look us up on Facebook or any platform that you might have. Mr. Rosales, could you uh, give us a little information on what exactly your business does? Yeah, yeah. So we provide services for anyone, actually, who has a wedding, um, parties. If you guys want to have a party here after, I can bring my tables. Um, uh, so I'm not big. I just started. So what this business consists of is going to be tables, chairs, umbrellas, um, tents, one tent, and heaters for the cold weather that's coming up. That's what I provide. Thank you, sir. I have a, uh, Mr. Uh, Rosales, we have a question from a council member, council member Smith. Do you have a 20 by 20 tent? I do, 20 by 30. <laughs> Give me your card. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I also deliver, um, since I don't have a physical location, but i um, more than happy to help everyone. Um, I have determination and and um, I plan to help all you guys. Thank you, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Don Blake. Just a housekeeping kind of uh, item. On the email that I sent to you folks last Friday, there's a typographical error in the last uh, paragraph it references California Welfare and Institutions Code sections 8255 and 8266. The 8266 is typographical. It should read 8256. Um, in Sunday's Enterprise Record, Sheriff Honia said we're seeing overdose deaths related both to methamphetamine as well as fentanyl with smaller quantities of the drugs being utilized. This council may soon be asked to vote either to accept or reject an encampment resolution fund ERF grant to fund in part the creation and operation of a pallet shelter in Oroville. The grant, if accepted, has a statutory requirement that the grant recipient, in this case, the city of Oroville, employ the harm reduction philosophy in the management of homeless drug addicts. Harm reduction is woke code for needle exchange programs 
and medically supervised drug injection sites. I cannot imagine that any one of the seven of you would believe that the harm reduction philosophy is a good public policy for Oroville. Likewise, I cannot imagine that any one of the seven of you, after a vote, looking the parents of our middle school and high school students in the eye and saying that it was more important to facilitate drug use by the homeless than it was to protect our children from being poisoned. Four of you are seeking voter approval for an extension of your political power in this community. Before folks vote, I submit that you owe them an explanation of your position on the ERF grant for the Pallet Shelter Program in Oroville. That's it. Thank you. <clears throat> Our next speaker is Stephanie Irish. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council. Um, I am here. I am not involved in the debate Thursday night <coughs> to squash some rumors. And it would be quite a shame that the public would not be privy to each and every candidate at that debate. It is questions given by the public um, from a lottery. Um, rumor has it it's biased. Rumor. Yes. It starts at 5 at the State Theater, and the 5 to 6 is the meet and greet, and then shortly after is, I guess every, once everyone gets seated, is the, um, the debate. I sure hope that every candidate finds it in their best interest to show up so the public can vote accurately thank you our next speaker is bill spear city council um yeah the um, exchange club's also putting on a debate and I think two, three debates, whatever would be good for everyone to um, to be able to get to know your policies. Um, and so um, if I could uh, get with you guys afterwards to get a, a picture and a, a, a bio for our flyer for the Exchange Club event would be real helpful. Um, I came here this uh, evening to pray and um, but I would like to start out by saying um, how impressed I was with uh, the progress with the Cal Fire and how well that seems to be working for our city how um, the uh, level of, of um, service is I think is obviously improved tremendously and I um, Glad to, to see how, how well that's working. Father God, I thank you for the fire department, the Orville Fire Department, for Cal Fire. We thank you for um, our police department, for all the ones who, who rush in first when, when things are, start happening. When we call, they come. And we just pray that you would continue to bless them, Lord, for the, the new volunteer uh, fire department. I pray that that would uh, inspire the this next generation. That you would the the training and that you would raise raise up uh, servants. In your word, it says the greatest of all shall be the servant of all. And I thank you for all the the public servants. We thank you for thank you for our mayor. And I pray blessings upon him and his family. Our vice mayor, all the city council who who serve, all the the staff, and um, that. Uh, show up every day and, and and put their whole heart into it and and all the service groups the um, the salmon festivals that's coming up and as we see our community uh come together and and in your word it says a house 
uh, divided cannot stand. And as I see, uh, the enemy tries to divide us, but then I see our city come together um, with the Salmon Festival, and, and we are a city. And I pray that we would get through this election um, with civility and, and uh, showing honor and respect and, and that our community would get stronger and better through it. We love you. We thank you. We praise you. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our last speaker is Dr. Lamar Collins. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Collins, principal at Los Plumas High School. I just wanted to come and introduce myself to the Leaders of this great city, uh, I've met several of you, so I wanted to come and introduce myself to the others of you. This is my second year, of course. Uh, I've actually worked with a couple of you, and I look forward to working with more of you. Um, I think that when city leaders and school leaders work together, it promotes greater student outcomes, which I know is what we all want. I do have to say I'm very proud of some of the things that we've done at LP. Uh, these last couple of years, we've offered more dual enrollment courses, which means that we are all, we're partnering with Butte College and allowing kids to take more classes that will give them credit at not only Los Plumas High School, but also Butte College. Of course, my goal is that I think that students ought to have the opportunity to have a, an associate's degree at the same time they get a high school diploma. I think that's possible, and certainly, we certainly want to work toward that. Um, I'm also very proud of our athletics programs. Uh, they're as big as they've been in a long time. We're finding tremendous success which helps with the culture of the school. I think what I'm most proud of is actually the partnership between law enforcement, healthcare, and the school district that we experienced last year with the Every 15 Minutes project uh, where we talked to students about drinking and driving. There's a, a huge wreck scene. It, it was just a, a great thing to be a part of. I say that to say this, that I believe great things are happening at, at Los Plumas High School. I don't see any reason why this cannot be the destination high school for all of Butte County. And I uh, just want you guys to know that I'm here to work. And if there's anything I can do to support you in the city, please let me know because I'm here to work. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> if you guys don't see the bell, we can get you in over at Orville. <laughs> okay. Looking for a motion to adopt the consent calendar. Mr. Mayor, we do have one speaker on item two. Oh, okay. Uh, public speaker? Okay. I move that we adopt the consent calendar exempt item two. Second. Motion carries with seven yeses and zero noes. Our speaker for item two is Bill Spear. Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor. <clears throat> um, I think that uh, it was suggesting to put uh, $80,000 more <coughs> with the tree work. Um, I would suggest um, doubling it and then putting it out for bid. Um, you know, there was a, a lot has changed. Um, you know, supply and demand were in a, a recession, hopefully not a depression. And, um, you know, the, uh, the $80,000, you know, might not seem like that much, but for a small company in Oroville to be able to get a contract like that, it's, uh, a pretty big a pretty big thing and um, there's actually a lot of tree work that needs done you know an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure recently they done a whole bunch of sidewalk grinding and curve grinding which which was good it alleviated the immediate um, hazard of tripping or whatever but it didn't fix the underlying problem which is trees that need to be removed there's trees all around Orville that, have, that are overgrown that are doing um, damage to the uh, sidewalks and to the gutters. I think it would be to the city's benefit to uh, increase the spending in the long run. 
in the short run, it's an expense, but in the long run, five, 10 years down the road, it's gonna save uh, millions and millions of dollars because of, of sidewalks, gutters, and curbs that are not gonna have to be replaced. For instance, there's some uh, uh, camphor trees right down the street here. They've been dying for a long time because the people aren't watering because we're in a drought. They're gonna continue to die. We've been cutting a little bit off them, a little bit off them, cutting one down here, one down there. They should all be cut down ground you can replace them with a blue oak which requires no water it's slow growing and it's an oak tree and it would be uh in the long run not cost the city hardly anything for the future of of the of the tree there's a uh, a lot of you know curb gutters and sidewalks cost a lot of money trees is a easy um an easy way to fix the long-term problem you get a new replacement tree it's fresh it's it's new it don't have any issues or problems it, it gets grown up then uh down the road you've saved uh a lot and you've already got this next generation of trees growing up our urban forest is growing tremendously we got some annexations getting ready to happen when that happens we're going to have a whole bunch more trees to take care of i think it would be very wise to to get a a handle on it and be proactive, put a little bit more in the budget right now, put it out to bid so other people can bid on it. Thank you. Mr. Legron, how come we added this to this uh, existing contract and we didn't put it out for bid? This was because we budgeted 200,000 for this year, uh, the same as we did in the previous fiscal year. And we did the contract the same as we did in the previous fiscal year. Uh, this year, the contractor ended up getting through the funds faster than they did in the previous fiscal year. The previous fiscal year, we added on another $80,000 in the spring um, in the latter half of that fiscal year, and this was much faster than anticipated. So we decided to add it to this existing contract next year going forward. Having learned from this, we would make it a $200,000 contract as opposed to the 120 dollars um, with anticipation to add as needed. So when you say they they went through it faster than anticipated, they went through two hundred thousand dollars. One hundred and twenty thousand dollars at fifteen hundred dollars a day. Fifteen ninety five. Yes. So, but this is not start, part of the same fiscal year. It is a part of the same fiscal year. We budgeted for two hundred thousand dollars for tree trimming for contract services, but only contracted for 120 based on the performance of the previous year. Okay. So, but I do like Mr. Spears' idea, and I think next year we could potentially put out an RFP for tree removal and replacement, and that will help our Parks Department get through a lot of these um, preventative measures quickly or much at a faster pace. And right now, Mr. Mayor, if it was the will of the council and the budget would allow, we could, um, if it was if the council chooses we can award or expand this budget with our current contractor allow them to work on that but simultaneously also put out the rfp to look at another contractor or potentially the same one uh, to let people bid on this because as it sounds to me what i'm hearing is that we have more work than we have budgeted um in our um, budgeted for our consultant or our contractor to take care of so we may have to expand the budget even more and come back with a, a expansion of that two hundred thousand because if we went through one hundred twenty thousand in less than 90 days um you know we should go right through the eighty thousand too if there's that much work out there i mean that's um and I will say, too, that this contract and the previous contracts for tree trimming has allowed our Parks Department to begin strategic removal of trees throughout Orville. You'll see a lot in the downtown area. Every other tree is being removed where there are trees that were improperly planted, wrong tree, wrong place. So they're trying to go back through, um, thin it out, and not do clean cuts of blocks and strategically remove every other tree so that we can replant and so the growth will be staggered and not a flat clean cut councilmember smith yeah i just want to say that uh, there's still a lot of work to be done absolutely i have a high profile vehicle sometimes i have to drive in a manner that's probably not as safe as one would like to because i can't stay on the right side of my of the road 
uh, at times. And, but that being said, so I would fully, thoroughly agree that uh, how many trees? I know we have, we're a city of trees, right? We have that distinct mm -hmm. designation. And so in, the, in our city limits, we have how, how many trees? Just a rough ballpark, 30,000 foot. Oh, thousands. We have all of our street trees GIS. I just don't have that number off the top of my head. I can I, provide that. I know it's many, many thousands uh, of mm -hmm. trees. So I would be in a complete agreement just on a personal anecdotal experience driving through town. Um, and then going back to that RFP with P31 that was awarded uh, back uh, in May, I believe, there was, as we all probably remember, those of us who were here, there was a little bit of a question as to uh, the clarity of that RFP uh, and how well it was publicly uh, put out there. There were some questions about that. And I, I would just say in light, of, in light of that, in light of that little, and I know how I voted on it, um, so just in light of that, I, I, I'm, I would personally like to see um, uh, as add more dollars to this uh, and, and bring it back and then put it out for an RFP unless, unless and, and again, this would require some consultation perhaps with Mr. Atterbury. This is you know, some sort of emergency dynamic here where we just need to get on it, let's get her done. I mean, if you can communicate that and you know, we feel like it, it, we need to strike now because we are, winter is right around the corner in case anyone hasn't noticed it did rain pretty significant. Um, and, 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 and if that, if you can communicate that to me, then I could go along with this. Otherwise, I would like to see us come back around and add additional dollars, um, and, you know, and then put it out. Well, and also to piggyback off with what Mr. Spears said, you know, prevention is key in preventing liability. And so we do have a lot of trees that still need to be trimmed and maintained. If we could add to this contract and budget for another hundred, two hundred thousand dollars to really make an impact on uh, our trees this year, that would be ideal. If the council wishes to wait until this next fiscal year, we can do that as well. But it's at the pleasure of the council. But there are tree needs. I guess what I'm saying is, and, and you know, I don't like the delay, but I mean, if we're really looking at, we just need to do this now, mm -hmm. get her done, because of the pending winter upon us, uh, then I can I can go ahead and support this. But if if not, if there's not that feeling of you know emergency, then I'd rather come back around and and put out the RFP. So I, I guess I'm just looking to you for some, you know. Um, I don't think that it's an urgent matter, but again, preventative measures. Are necessary. Well, and so. Councilperson Smith, you're looking at to put out an RFP to get it back to award the RFP. You're looking probably uh, 70 to 90 days before you can do that, which puts you into right around the end of the year. Okay, that, that's not acceptable. I think with the, Mr. Spears, I think with the comments about some of the trees perhaps even failing, that perhaps we just need to do this um, now and then come back with an RFP. Um, I just would hate to see anybody hurt, you know, because of a delay. You know, we don't know, of course, we don't know what the winter's going to be like. Right. If it continues like we kind of see it here, given as a little tip in its hand, right? Yeah. Uh, it could be pretty robust. Let's hope for a good rainy season, but. Um, I, I would like to just, one of the concerns is when trees go for a long period of time without water, then all of a sudden we get this rain, the water pulls to the limbs. Our next wind event or storm, you're going to see a lot of down trees. Mm -hmm. So I think it's more urgent than. I'm kind of conflicted with this because I don't like what happened the last time a little bit. It was a little concerning. Uh, but uh, public safety is paramount always. So. Vice Mayor Thompson. I. Uh How's that? Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. Thanks. I echo the sentiments of uh, Councilman Smith, and uh, I, I'm fully on board with putting this out to um, RFP. The original S or the original bid was 120, so 80 of that is 75% of the original amount. I'm quite a bit. So um, I'm definitely worthy of an RFP. And if we just hired P31 to go through our trees, my I know there's a lot of work out there, but I would guess that they would hit the most needed trees first 
that are yeah they work with our ar arborist as to what their plan of action is for the trees that need the most dire need immediately so my I, I would assume then that um, we're not the sky isn't falling and that we and I think we could do it faster than 60 or 90 days I mean that's that's I know we're the government but that seems like a it's really a matter slow of getting process. back to the council which is two weeks and then putting it out for 30 days doing the walk and all of that and then bringing it back I mean it's just it's logistically because we only meet twice a month it could be up to that I mean that that's worst case scenario I was presenting sure Worst case government scenario, absolutely. Yes, it's not out, outlandish, but I think we could definitely do it faster than that. Um, I know that we have uh, had upset citizens over a lot less amount than 80000 and just awarding that to somebody. Um, and I know that that, that uh, Mr. Spears' company isn't the only uh, company in town that's local that would be interested in putting out an estimate or a bid on this. So I'm in favor of putting this out to RFP. Long story short. And would the council like to add to the dollar amount to make it a more robust RFP? I would like RFP? to com comment before we go into any details. Um, so if I'm understanding this correctly, we've went through the $120,000 in 90 days or, or um, proximity thereof. So um, what would happen now is if we go out to RFP with this money, then we're going to stop the work. Yes. Okay. My suggestion uh, would be that we continue through the budget money, but we put out another RFP immediately because this money is going to go away quick and we're not going to have our work done anywhere close to what we need done. We, and we have a damn, I just had another tree come down the other day at my office, right where the cars park. So had to have it taken down, soft shell pecan, pecans three inches long. My dad planted that tree 40 years ago and I had to take it down because of what Mr. Belser said about all of his logistics of barking up the wrong tree and the over water. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that would be my suggestion if it's uh, at the uh, pleasure of this council would be that we continue work because we, I believe we are in a, a emergency situation. We've all seen it all over town. I was sitting here speaking to a gentleman the other day out on the sidewalk in front of his store and we heard a big crack and a limb came off right in front of the uh, um, jewelry store there. And uh, it was a Saturday and city works crew came out and and uh cleaned it up but it fell on a car and it fell on the sidewalk so i i think that we're in a situation where we not only need to keep the work going but we need to put it out an rfp uh for additional work mr Grom. yes sir did you want to respond to that no, I'm just waiting for direction. Okay. I work at the pleasure of the council and fourth council. <laughs> <laughs> what if we did the same amount, 120, and that week we're already 75% there? Well, let's, Council Member Pittman would like to speak on this. Yeah, well, let's get the work done. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you guys are vacillating over the issue. This company, the contractor, needs some more money to finish it up. Then we'll know what we need to put out a proper RFP for the entire year. You're talking about a half-baked RFP for a portion of the year. Let's get the work done, and, and then they'll know when we put out the RFP what kind of numbers we're talking about because we have one contractor that's actually doing the work. We can take that experience, we'll throw it out to an RFP so we get somebody else for another year. You're talking about an RFP for a short term, small dollar amount. That's not going to get anybody done, and it's going to be 120 days. I guarantee you. I've been in government for 45 years. You can't shorten the process. You don't get to shorten the process. Look at the attorney shaking his head. Yeah, no kidding. So to think that we can get it out in a shorter period of time is just fallacy. Consequently, I'll move that the, we accept the, make a motion to accept the recommendation as presented in the staff recommendation. And I make a secondary motion that we put out a second RFP for 120. I'll second that. Mr. Mayor, just for clarity, what are you seconding? I'm seconding his motion that we continue the work for the, the remainder of the budget, 
the $80,000 with P31 and that we put out another RFP for additional work for $120,000. And please don't make it half-baked. No, so uh, just for, uh, I, I see by the shaking of your head, Vice Mayor Thompson, that is your recommendation, Absolutely. is to allow the work to continue with the 80000 but put out an, a secondary RFP for 120000 well, It was more clear exactly okay. that. I just want to have clarity on the record. Okay, so that would also be a budget adjustment to add more funds to this current budget to for the second RFP. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay, uh, and we the, vote on that second I, motion. I, I, for, the finance we, director, I apologize, is asking if this can come out of district tax dollars. I'm sure it Could can. this be a measure you yes. expense? Okay. Yes. Thank you. And, Council uh, Member Smith. Yeah, I was just going to say this is fiscal year 22-23, so it takes yes. us through June, into June, essentially. Correct. So we're adding $120,000 to that budget coming out of the expense account uh, noted measure U dollars. Yes. Okay. Just want to just want to clarify. Everyone understands what we're talking about. Okay. Councilperson Goodson, I believe I heard you second. Councilperson Pittman's motion is that correct, or what? And Vice so Mayor Thompson's goes motion first. votes first. Correct. I, um, right. So I think that we have a very similar uh, motion here, and I, I just asked the Vice Mayor and Councilperson Pittman if we can combine those because we are approving the $80,000 so the work can continue, but then we're also bringing back. That's not what my motion was. That was. Yeah, that's what it was. No, my motion was for this to continue, the our current contract, not canceling the current the, contract. The current, no. The current contract, the funds have been okay. exhausted. No, we got, we're approving $80,000 to move forward. To amend the current contract. To, mm -hmm. So you're adding 80, so the motion. We have $200,000 yeah. budgeted. We spent 120,000. Right. We are approving the additional 80,000 for that budget. And now we are asking for an RFP to go out for an additional $120,000. Okay, that's, that's what I understood. Mr. Legrone said, Mr. Thompson, is that what you? Yes, I'm fine that, Okay. And council person and my original motion because that's not what I first said but I'm that's I was gonna say that but I didn't hear that <laughs> but I know what motion, he meant but <laughs> <laughs> I, wanted to, I don't want him to stop well that, that being said council person mm -hmm. Pittman will you withdraw your yes. motion because it is very similar to right or it's not the same no problem withdraw thank you sir council member Smith yeah you? and just for clarity this through, you have to realize this is through June of next year so that's we're correct. coming into a full winter season and that's not just to end of December this is fiscal year just reminding the public yes. that, right so this I think is very necessary mm -hmm. I'm very okay. much in agreement so now that just to be so that everybody's clear there is one motion on the table because the other motion has been withdrawn Senate, right so the only motion that's left is vice mayor Thompson the motion that was seconded by the mayor crystal ready for a vote all right calling for the vote Motion carries with seven yeses and zero noes. Moving on to regular business, item number eight, project <coughs> contract with Q&D Construction, LLC. Good evening, Mayor Reynolds, Vice Mayor Thompson, and council members. This is a request to consider a project contract with Q&D Construction in the amount of $380,972.50 for the Orville Airport crack seal of uh, runway 220 and the associated taxiways. You'll see the map that I provided you on the dais. Uh, those, the yellow highlighted area is the area that will receive the crack seal application. This will ensure longevity of runway 220 until its uh, proposed rehabilitation in 2029. We have received a grant from the FAA in the amount of $511,000 to cover the cost of this. It is a 10% match grant. We have also received a 5% match of the 10% from the Department of Transportation. So the city's out-of-pocket cost from the airport fund would be no more than $25,000. And the current balance of that fund is $493,880. Do we have any comments from the public on this item? I do not have any public speakers on this item. Councilmember Goodson. Yes, What is what fund is this coming out of? Sorry. Oh, well, the I should know. 
for the project, it's coming from grant funds, FAA grant funds. Okay. And then the 10% match would come out of the airport fund, but we also received a 5% match of the 10%, so it would be 5% not to exceed 25,000 from the airport fund. Okay, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. I just needed that breakdown. Yeah. Any other questions from this dais? Having none. Looking for a vote to adopt resolution number 9097. So, so moved. I'll second. Moving on public hearings, we will open the public hearing at, what's that? Oh, I'm sorry. Council Member Goodson. And carries with seven yeses and zero noes. Open the public hearing at 9.42, or 5.42 p.m. Feels like 9.42. <laughs> uh, item number nine, public hearing community development block grant CDBG 2022 program income only application and use of CDBG program income for improvements to the Orville Convention Center. Good evening, Mayor Reynolds and council members. Tonight's public hearing is a state community development block grant program requirement where the city is required to solicit comments from the public and the council regarding the usage of unanticipated program income. Program income is the repayment of city funded loans, which would be first time homebuyer loans, economic development loans, and owner occupied rehabilitation <coughs> loans. Um, the unencumbered CDBG program income balance is approximately $850,000 currently. If these funds are not used or applied to either an open grant or a new application, um, then we would be required to send that amount back to the state. Um, staff met and concluded that a good use for these funds um, and future receipts would be to utilize them for improvements of the Orville Convention Center. The improvements that we've identified um, for the scope of work would be to remodel the men and women's restrooms, dressing areas, showers, that includes new lighting, plumbing, electrical, and accessible upgrades. Um, the stage is to be modified to accommodate new restrooms and dressing area, installation of a wheelchair lift at each side of the stage, and then accessible upgrades to the foyer, including new doors glazing to the walls, new efficient windows, epoxy floors, interior paint, and new trellis and awning. The improvements would be about $1,256,000. Activity delivery in the amount of $60,000 would be utilized for labor standards monitoring, inspections, and staff time. And then 84,000 in general admin would cover staff time, NEPA preparation, noticing, and other overhead costs. I'd be happy to answer any questions from you or the public. Do we have any questions from the public on this item? Mr. Mayor, I do not have any public speakers. Council Member Pittman. Yeah, thank you. I think it's a great use of the funds and this the building certainly needs it. I might add the idea of a, a, a in heightened camera, camera security system for the facility, both inside and outside, uh, because we have such high volumes of people using it now, and uh, we certainly don't want vandalism to occur, so sometimes cameras are about the only way to either catch them or prevent it. So, And I don't know what the numbers are, but yeah, I'm sure you guys can come up with some su suggestions. I did want to... Um I didn't make it extremely clear, but we have the $850,000 currently. And what I'm asking is to um, also use future receipts of program income that would be coming in to utilize for this project. However, because of the um, market right now, we're not seeing as many payoffs as we've seen in the last few years. So I'm not sure how that, I estimated based on the last couple of years of receipts, right. I'm not sure what that's gonna look like or how fast we'll receive income, uh, program income. So, um, Don had, uh, I can't remember the fund that we put. I did budget a million in capital improvements for this project yeah. in anticipation um, that we may not receive the approval for the funding from CDBG. So we have it partially covered uh, in anticipation. And the engineer's estimate of 1.25 million was also an increase of inflation um, into that cost, so he said it. He anticipated it would be about a million, but he added another two hundred fifty thousand dollars in anticipation of inflated, uh, the inflated market and materials. So, <laughs> surveillance system in the the upgrade, so that yeah. it's a good idea. It's a, to protect our asset. We sunk a lot of money into this building. Yeah, I, that's that's and my I was only thought. Going to suggest I could look for other funding too, if that we didn't have enough sure. through this program. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Member Smith. Yeah, just 
echo that we've spent a lot of money on this building, but it's a beautiful asset. Mm. And this may already be on uh, the radar, but it would be great to have a report. It will uh, be on the next agenda. I will present the plans. The plans have undergone their first plan check with the building department just to make sure that we're not missing anything um, significant with accessibility codes, anything like that. And then I plan to bring the plans back as, for a presentation uh, at the next council meeting. As wonderful as that is, I was thinking oh. of the YMCA. Yes. Because they they uh, occupy that facility. And it would just be kind of nice to hear from them and okay. some sort of you know, PowerPoint. Uh, yes, uh, Sarah can thank me later. I can certainly wide. ask them yeah. to present. Uh, but to you know, come at some point here in the near future and give us a heads up as to how uh, they're serving the community and all the wonderful things that are happening up there. It'd be just nice to hear from them. I can ask them to present. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. Councilmember Goods. Just curious in ballpark, it, how much money have we soaked into this building? We're currently at 1.2 million and that follows the arson and other dry rot issues, roof replacement, everything. Mm -hmm. It's a very large facility that was desperately in need of improvement and attention. And there are still, this doesn't cover the hardscaping outdoor mm -hmm. ramping area also. Or the pool. <laughs> Might as well. With water slide down <laughs> to the river. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> if you're finished, Councilmember Goodson. Yes, I I'd am. like to comment on, did you say the contractor told you it'll probably be around a million, but you Not put the contractor, engineer's estimate. Engineer's, okay. Because mm -hmm. I don't get to bid jobs like that. No, it was an no. engineer's estimate. Okay. So the architectural engineer requested an estimate from a partnering engineering firm because he doesn't do estimates himself, and so that's where we are with the estimate. Okay, Vice Mayor Thompson. Thank you, so yeah, somebody mentioned regarding the outside uh, ramp and removing the fountain and all that. So where's, where are we at with that one? That is also in design phase. I should be having, should be receiving plans back for that front facade uh, and access in the next couple of weeks. It was still in design phase. Great. It's all been surveyed um, and we're just waiting for plans. Well, I love what you guys have done so far with it. So thank you. Shall we approve the five million now? <laughs> <laughs> it's only shy five million. <laughs> um, if there are no further comments, and it's the pleasure of this board, I would entertain a motion to adopt resolution number nine zero nine eight. So move. I'll second. Thank you. I'm not hesitating because I don't know what to vote. It's it's just processing the we're stuck with it. Motion carries with seven yeses and zero noes. Well, that will close public hearing at 5.50 p.m. Moving on to reports, discussions, and correspondence. Are there any announcements from this council? Vice Mayor Hi. Thompson. Yeah, oh, we'd love to hear from you. Oh, thanks. It's a beautiful day. <laughs> Council Member Goodson. Yes, thank you, um, Pastor Bill Spear, for mentioning the uh, exchange club that will be hosting once again for so many years and I don't know how many years but it's been a tradition to host the candidate forum and it's my understanding it will be October 6 uh, at the State Theater and I believe it's Mr. Jim Mull has agreed to MC. all right but I also wanted to mention uh, Wednesday tomorrow evening at seven o'clock uh, the League of Women Voters will also be holding their annual and traditional uh, candidate forum. It's going to be held at 7 o'clock, and the link information can be found on their Facebook page and their website as well. So I would encourage everyone to um, participate and, and find out and ask questions of the candidates. Councilmember Smith. Yeah, I just want to thank everyone involved 
for getting this this year's salmon festival off uh, to a start. Uh, Friday night, this Friday night at Centennial Plaza at six o'clock, there is a fundraiser to support our nature center. So all proceeds will go toward that particular endeavor. It's a wonderful uh, piece. Of course, it's the old bathhouse now converted uh, into a little mini museum. They do a lot of work with children. Uh, it's just a great asset that we have in our community. Again, all of those proceeds will go toward the support of that particular endeavor. And then, of course, uh, on Saturday, we have the Salmon Festival. Looking forward to seeing all of you out there. Thank you. Councilmember Pittman. Yeah, thank you. Um, just a quick, um, it's in open for public comment now with the Housing Authority of Butte County, which I serve on. And we have finally put together a policy to and offer a voucher housing voucher program <coughs> for the kids that are at out of the foster program at age 18. My understanding is the foster program pretty much um, kicks them out and they have no way to get housing. Uh, we have a policy that's going to be it's in place right now up open for public comment that will offer a number of vouchers to that particular population between age 18 and 25. Uh, they'll at least help them get into some housing. That's the first of any county in the state. Uh, so it's a novel program and I got to compliment the housing staff to come up with the idea. Working with uh, behavioral health and the foster agencies, those, that'll be something positive for that particular uh, group of people that uh, miss out on housing. Um, glad to see that move forward. Anyone else? I know more about mm -hmm. um, having no one future agenda items. I haven't seen anything on the oak tree. <laughs> that is in progress. Councilmember Pippen. Yeah, thank you. I've gotten a couple calls uh, from constituents about um, at uh, Ishi Hill School, it's, which is out on Foothill Boulevard. Uh, a lot of the kids are now walking along Foothill Boulevard, and I know. Uh, we had a safe to school, safe routes to schools grant process in the past. I'm kind of inquiring about that if, if we could have that to the future because there's, I don't know what it is, uh, probably a couple thousand feet of um, roadway that the kids are walking. And I also understand the school district's not using buses this year. They don't, yeah, they, there's been a shortage of drivers actually for the buses, so they're having a very difficult time with that. Uh, we have actually applied for that uh, safe routes to schools a couple different times and been unsuccessful okay. in that grant. Every time it does become available, though, we do go after that grant because we do recognize that that is an area um, that not only uh, across Foothill, but up or dam or Olive Highway, I'm sorry, right. across Foothill or Quincy back to or dam. Yeah. We're trying to in enclose all of that in sidewalk in that area. So we are actively and aggressively going after that. Well, and I appreciate that. And that's what I'll carry back to the, the folks that we're talking about, but because they're not running buses and the kids that live in the Stanford Avenue area are all walking or if they're not getting the ride from the parents, but it also might be something in the meantime, if staff could take a look at the shoulder of the roadways mm -hmm. along Foothill and possibly along Olive Highway to do some temporary thing in the meantime. And or maybe even have a discussion at the school site to instruct students on where they should and shouldn't be walking because I've been by there and I see some walking over the hill, some walking you know, all different places. Uh, it could be a training thing for the kids because with the bus is not running, the, we certainly don't want to have an accident, and it'd be love. It'd be great to see sidewalk curb and gutter all along there, but you know that's not real right now. But um, anything staff has suggestions, I'd be wonderful to hear. Yeah, I became aware of this, and I spoke with the engineering staff, and we're going to look at creative solutions until mm -hmm. such time that we are awarded a grant for the yeah. Safe Routes to School. Very good, thank you. I'd like to speak on that because I've been working on this for over three years, the exact same thing, putting sidewalks down that road from that school both ways and then a uh, stoplight down at a crosswalk and, and uh, stoplight or caution light um, as you enter Foothill from Oral Quincy because there's no safe place to cross the road. The kids are falling down the hill and, and like I said, I've been working on this with staff for over three years. So I, I hope we're successful. We're putting roundabouts. Can put a roundabout in? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two of them. <laughs> <laughs> one at Canyon Islands and one at Foothill. Mm -hmm. uh, Vice Mayor Thompson. 
Thank you. Just in, in a matter of the, the wall with the rainforest, could you give us a, a updated presentation at some point with the actual barrier between the walkway and the, the road? I think that's something council or vice mayor Thompson that you guys are going to have to decide. We're going to give you options as to what that would be. And then you would select what that option is for that barrier. So when are we going to see that? Um, I would think that once we get, we're getting close to that point where the wall is going to be completed. The landscaping behind it will be the rough landscaping will be done. And then once that's done, we're to the point that we're uh, ready to initiate the, the barrier there. So I would think probably within the next couple months that that would be coming in front of you for your decision so that we can keep that project going. So these sidewalks are not going to go in until the barrier until, cause I imagine if it's something that's built that would need footings with the sidewalk that right. would be advantageous. Yeah, no, we wouldn't put the sidewalk in and come in and immediately jackhammer it out to put the footing in for mm -hmm. it. I mean, that's just, you know, that is a good government move, but we are not going to do that. Um, we will make <laughs> that sure would, that, that would it be follows. much like government. Yes, <laughs> we will make sure that it follows a, a more logical process. I, I thought it was already in the nice <laughs> orange K rail and the six foot. That's a beautiful orange mm -hmm. K rail. Thanks. Okay. Um, well, if there are no more future agenda items administration reports Ms. Bergstrom Chief Tins I think Chief Sholin summed up a lot for us tonight but I did want to touch um, something came up about the smoke trailer it's over 20 years old this will probably be its last go around um, we've been looking at replacing it they're a little expensive if anybody has any ideas or knows of any funding your that, mic on please <clears throat> maybe it should go out with a bank yeah. Well, I remember. I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> the trailers attended a lot of public edu education events, and you mm -hmm. know it's just getting to the point where it's starting to leak now. The wood inside's rotten. It's it's extremely old. So, I'd like to hear a bullet list on what it needs. Okay. Um, Mr. Legrand. I have nothing, Chief Mr. Mayor. City Administrator. I have nothing, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Huber, um, Ms. Nevers, Mrs. Nevers. Nothing to report. Mrs. Ruth. I just wanted to let council know that I am working on a list for all the vehicles that were budgeted this year. Um, we didn't really have a list completed at the time the budget was completed, so we just put in a number of $2 million. We still have a lot of uh, vehicles that didn't come in from prior years, so I'm finishing up a list I needed to get them in the right departments but I'll have it on the next agenda so you can see everything that staff is requesting to purchase this year because it was not done at budget cycle we just put a two million dollars in there and now we're going to go and let ahead and let you know what the list is so that when they come to council you know that we have budgeted for them and and everything's in there um Mr. Belser good evening um I know I sent out correspondence, but I had a meeting this week with Ian Clement, who's the new housing navigator. Um, back in April, you guys approved the 20 hour a week position for him to go out and make contact with the unhoused individuals. And uh, meeting with him and uh, a couple of the supervisors this week, um, we ironed out a pretty good plan about how um, he's gonna go out in the community. He's gonna work with code enforcement, uh, the municipal law enforcement officers and the police department. Um, this individual um, is, uh, he has an amazing resume of, of dealing with unhoused individuals, projects from Sacramento all the way to Tacoma, Washington. Um, very intelligent individual um, and says that we can reach out to him at, at any time and uh, he'll come out in the field. And uh, we have some projects planned for tomorrow and then additional projects in the future where he'll go out with our um, different partners, the MLEs, the police, code enforcement, whoever needs him to make contact with individuals, uh, screen them and, and see where they fit in the, uh, the realm of housing, you know, whether they need behavioral health services, um, getting their um, social security lined back up. And uh, so it was, it was a neat meeting and I was excited to have him on board and uh, I'll introduce him to you guys in the future. And then uh, I also had a meeting with Scott Chalm Chalmers, who is the new uh, man or interim manager for Park and Rec. Uh, if you guys get a chance, you should go down and see the work that they did at the skate park. It's pretty amazing. They went through and uh, abated all the graffiti 
uh, working on uh, systems when we talk about graffiti and vandalism. And when I drive down and see the new wall that's on there in the fish hatchery, there's some really cool techniques to where you don't have to paint on uh, beautiful concrete. And we are talking about those techniques and we'll talk about that in the future. Um, additionally, with like the veterans wall that we're dealing with a lot of graffiti on the back, how to avoid putting paint on that and getting it back to its the natural condition when it was first constructed. So I thought it was a really interesting meeting. Um, I enjoy building partnerships with individuals. Um, he's an ambitious guy that, that wants to really be a part of the city mm -hmm. and uh, with public works and code enforcement and law enforcement and pairing up and dealing with the homeless issues that we have in our parks. We also discussed um, uh, temporary lighting possibilities um, for uh, Bedrock Park. I know we have a lot of uh, citizens that came forward to concerned about the lighting there at nighttime and, and the individuals that tend to loiter there in the evening time. Um, they, you know, I'll come and present that at a later time, but they are willing to supply um, the power and the poles and they're going to give a bid for lights if we could cover the lights. Um, those lights will be pointed to direction of Bedrock Park to light it up until we can take care of the electrical issues we have there now and additionally light up the uh, skate park. So it's a really good meeting, really neat individual, and, and uh, I'm going to be happy to introduce him to you guys as well. Cool. Great. Mm -hmm. um, suggestion about restoration on those surfaces is uh, I think everyone's familiar with sandblasting, but there is a product, walnut hole, holes, mm -hmm. that you blast with and they're softer and we use that on brickwork and block and things and it restores it to the natural finish yeah so what um chico the city of chico and marysville and them they use a product called elephant snot for lack of a better term it's what's <laughs> called it's um not bad for the environment it's completely natural use that with a pressure washer and uh, it seems to be, it works amazing. Uh, one of my code enforcement technicians, Julio Salcedo, he was a, uh, um, one of the downtown, uh, I forget what they call them, but ambassadors for Chico. And they used to use that product a lot. He brought it up. I had him join a meeting with us because he has some background in dealing with graffiti and uh, brought up that idea and um, as well as Scott Chalmers and seems to be a neat idea. We're trying to get prepared because when I drive by that wall, I can just imagine what's gonna happen to it. And I always wanna think that, you know, the best of everybody, but I know that thing's gonna get tagged and vandalized. So. Well, yeah, but then we gotta consider the cost of housing an elephant. <laughs> okay. Councilmember Goodson. What's the shipping cost for? Elephants not. <laughs> it comes in a five gallon bucket, so I don't know where they get it from. <laughs> Home Depot. <laughs> Do, I don't know. Um, so my question is in regards to the new navigator. Um, Ian is his name? Ian Clement. Ian, and so mm -hmm. you gave us the contact information yes. in our city email. I really appreciate that. Absolutely. I started to call him immediately, but mm -hmm. I felt that I would wait for a formal introduction. So my question is, I know that we have accessibility to him, but is there a public link? And and how is that going to be monitored? Because he will be bombarded. Yeah, so I, I anticipate monitoring based on um, importance and what we have to deal with and uh, his caseload. Additionally, during the meeting, they said they would um, provide additional navigators mm -hmm. as needed. So if we have a, a particular area that's high dense and in, in unhoused individuals, those, those folks are willing to come out and make contact as well, along with um, building our partnership again with behavioral health. So we go out as a team. Um, I want to, you know, it's going to be a very organized situation, um, assessing any type of safety hazards before we go out there for individuals that, that aren't armed and can't, uh, you know, defend themselves. So all of that stuff will, um, is a part of the program that I designed and how this individual is going to work. He's, um, you know, he's going to get pulled a hundred different directions by different departments. And I know that's going to happen. It's best is just to keep that under control and deal with, uh, step, step stuff based on seriousness and then move from there so don't we uh aren't we partnering with the county on this and he's yeah we so have you 20 guys hours 20 a hours a week mm -hmm. and they've also you know as needed they will provide additional help so. council uh, person cuts in if i could just uh, weigh in on this the 
the idea of this program is not going to be one where the public calls in and say, hey, I see a homeless person, come do something about it. I mean, that's this will still be through the traditional processes of the police, uh, municipal law enforcement or code enforcement. This individual will be teamed with them. The idea, as I understand this program, is to utilize the assets and skills of this person on the most difficult cases um, that are out there to get them to treatment. The, uh, we do a pretty good job of the ones who are looking for help that want help. It's the ones that we run into that uh, that they feet. do not want any help. They don't want to change anything that this person will come into. And just for your, uh, so you're aware, the funding for this is coming through an opioid settlement that we have received. We were the recipients okay. of that um, as part of a class action suit all over the country. We recently received that money. So that's how we're paying for this. This is not general fund dollars. This is part of a class action lawsuit where the city was awarded funding. Through, um, through the county? No, this is coming directly to the city, directly and then we the will city. reimburse the county for the 20 hours a week of this individual's okay. work here in the this city. This comes from the federal government, from your congressman, right? No, this comes from a law, uh, a lawsuit from yeah, a lawsuit from the, the Congress. No, this has nothing oh, yeah. to do with the government. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. thank you mm -hmm. for that detail. Yeah, this this is related to multi district litigation against the opioid manufacturers on behalf of public agencies. Um, there, there were a number of public agencies that initiated the litigation. Then it became a class action where you, we had the option to join or not, and the the city joined. And um, there's a formula that that based on population that allocates money to different areas based based on the total settlement amount, and then it's reduced based on population. They give it to each agency based on population. <clears throat> Okay. Um, and it was population based on 2019 or 2020, something like that. Anyway, um, if memory serves me, our initial tranche is 30, don't quote me on this, $39,000 in that range. And there will be several tranches after that. Um, but Vice Mayor Thompson. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bill, so for all that you're doing with code enforcement, you guys are rock stars. Um, I like what you're you're doing with the uh, Bedrock Park and the skate park. It, it'd be great if uh, OPD and the code enforcement had a little more patrols around the skate park. I know that uh, my boys go there, and you could, I know there's kids that hang out there. Then there's an adult that comes and sells something to them. I'm guessing it's not candy, and uh, takes off. So that's pretty regular. Um, but if the uh, if there's cameras, I like the lighting. If the graffiti returns, I prefer clean, like you guys did. Um, but I know that the kids uh, there's some pride they have in some of that stuff. So maybe that was not removed. Just so you know, the memorial stuff and that was not removed. They framed around that. And oh, great. Up. So also, my my thought was in regarding that doing some uh, tasteful, nice because some of the stuff is just. I don't know. But if there was some, um, maybe with the art commission, uh, doing some RFPs for nice, that, that's something we like, oh, that's cool, graffiti that the kids can take ownership of and be something to be proud of, but being more in that graffiti type style. I will tell you what came out of the cleanup is they were talking to kids that were there skating, and there was a, a young man there that was out of Visalia, and he said that they, um, down in Visalia, at their skate parks, that they um, erect these signs around the park that kids, if they feel the need to spray paint, they can spray paint on it once a month. They go through and clean it off, and then they can <coughs> retag it to avoid retagging the skate park itself. So that's an idea that uh, you know Park and Rec's looking at as well. Yeah, some of the artists are amazing. It's just the content that we sure. we have to monitor, mm -hmm. but a lot of talent. Uh, Councilmember Smith. Yeah, appreciate the conversation. Um, given this kind of newfound relationship with the county, sparked a question in my mind because of an incident uh, that happened to me just a month ago where I was attacked by a person that was just let out of the, our jail. County, because, you know, obviously the county jail is here where the county seat. It was a rather um, tense experience. So, and again, the question is, 
do do they have some sort of fiscal responsibility when there's a release? I mean, is there kind of like a time frame? You know, just thinking about our cost no. to deal with that. No. So immediately when they're released, it's all on us. The, the, when they're when you're released from the jail, you're like anyone else. I mean, no one is responsible for you. So there's not like a an out within no. first. Day. So we we just absorb all of that. There there are individuals that are released with OR bail terms or terms, but I mean, as far as the release, no, they're because this person free. obviously had mental health issues. And so I just kind of want to, going back to the, the conversation here, just, you know, how that all works. So if that person's contact, so if you're releasing or they're releasing someone with, and I don't want to belabor this because perhaps another time, but it would just seem to me like that would be important, especially if someone has a high recidivity rate uh, because of mental illness or drug addiction, that kind of thing, given it's our relationship with the county jail. Just a thought maybe to pursue or look into. Thank, Thank you. you. If there is nothing else, we will adjourn until October 4th, 2022 at 4 p.m.